Well, I'll start here at the City Arms, mm -hmm. which was a pub which is now in Docklands. And the name has now been changed to City Pride, but the original people in it was a lovely drag queen called Phil Starr, who unfortunately passed away a few years ago in Brighton and stopped all the traffic down there. Um, the person he's singing with is Gay Travers, who also passed away a few years ago, but was still working as a compare in all the East End pubs, all from, from post-war until, until recently. Um, I think the last time he worked in East London was at the Carpenter's Arms in Cambridge East Road. Um, what else can I tell you about? Um, this is another picture. This, so I tried to get, oh, Laurie Lee, now she's a Bermondsey boy or girl with a cockney sense of humour. She first worked as a merchant seaman for the first, last few years has been on dry land, where she was very, very funny in a comedy act all over the south of England, and unfortunately she's passed away. She's been described as the Cockney Mae West but his sense of humour is more in reminiscent of Max Miller. I'm reading that, so... That's... Did you see her? Hmm? Did you see her perform? Oh, yeah, yeah. What was she like? Um, she was very good, very professional, because a lot of these queens were in the merchant service, mm -hmm. and also they were in a show, I think it was just after the war, a lot of them came out of the forces and started this... We were in the forces, I think, the first show was called. And the star of that was somebody called Louis Hayden, known to his friends as Lola. Uh, he was an East End boy. He'd been a tailor originally, but he'd got this sort of sudden urge to be a drag queen. And um, he played all the number one houses, um, Finsbury Park Empire, Hackney Empire, all various places. And then he went out to New York to seek his fame and died very young in his early, four, I think it's late thirties, had a heart attack. Um, that was Louis Hayden. And then there's another picture of Gay Travers here with one of his others. Not that, oh, there's Phil Starr, that's another one of Phil Starr. I imagine it's been taken in the fifties. And you saw Phil Starr. And Phil Starr, yeah, because he was popular right up until he, he died suddenly in Brighton. Um, not that, well, it, as far as I know, it doesn't seem that long ago, but it must have been about four or five years. I'm not absolutely sure of the time. But I'm quite sure if you asked even today's young gay people, they would have heard of him because he did stop the traffic in Brighton with his funeral. And Dockyard Doris stopped the traffic in Hackney Road when she had her funeral. So, uh, but um, originally, I think the, the actual gay cabaret scene started years before that in a pub called the City Arms. Um, no, wait a minute, that City Arms was in Docklands. No, this was called the Coach and Horses. Uh, forgive me, but it was even a bit before my time. Um, the Coach and Horses was opposite what was then the People's Palace, and a lot of gay, a lot, a lot of the gay people that had been in the forces and then in the drag shows, they only got Sundays off, and they used to congregate in this East End pub, and they didn't do drag in those days. I don't know whether it was illegal or what it was, but. Uh, I know they didn't do drag. I'm talking about the late 40s. Um, for some reason, they were, didn't do drag. It wasn't actually a gay pub, but all the gay people that knew these queens used to go to it. And they um, used to get up and sing songs. There was, uh, as I say, Phil Starr, I believe, was one of them. There was somebody else called Suki and somebody called Trixie. And they were all East End boys all getting up and singing these very camp songs. They did their own lyrics to them. And a lot of the local sort of men loved it because they didn't feel threatened. Right. 
These were artists. Um, the only thing, I remember once meeting somebody, there was a, an old Jewish queen in the East End that they called Kosher Kitty. Her real name was Elfrid Marin, and I was at school when I first met her. And I met her one day with this poor soul that had been a, a prisoner of war in the Japanese prison camps. In those days, when they came out of the forces um, with an affliction of some sort, they were what's called hospital blue. Probably never heard of that. I've never heard it brought up, actually, from that day to this. Um, instead of wearing their uniforms, they wore a blue jacket and blue trousers and a white shirt. And for some reason, you knew when you looked at them that they were soldiers invalided out of the art forces. Well, this particular one that was with Kosher Kitty, he said, oh, you must meet my friend Dolly. She's just come out of hospital. She's been in for about two years or something with beriberi and some other dreadful disease. But, and this Dolly said, yeah, and the only thing that kept me alive in the hospital um, while I was being tortured was the thought of coming back to the East End to Liverpool Street Cottages and finding a bit of trade. If you know what that means, shall I interpret it or do you know what it means? I think you should interpret it. Well, um, when bucking the cottage was something that gay people did looking for straight trade. It was called bucking the cottage. And there was a certain amount of, I think, um, bravado. They got a kick out of the um, taking a chance. If they got away with it, they got quite upset. It was amazing, really, because I, I knew one or two of them, like this kosher kitty, that was always getting punched up. And he said, oh, but that's half the pleasure, darling. So something I could never understand, old dyke that I may be, but um, I just never could understand why they bucked the cottages. But that was it. It was the, the thrill of the unknown. So, but uh, so all these people that... Um, I knew in the East End, they, they went to these pubs and then there was a show started on the television called Star and Garter and it was about a fictitious pub and the woman called Kathy Kirby, who I believe was a big star in the 50s, she was a star of it and supporting her was somebody called Ray Martin, who I'd known previously as Rachel doing a cabaret scene in this pub. Uh, again, it's been pulled down. It was in the Roman Road, sort of towards Cambridge East Road, I think, block of council flats now. Um, and most of the pubs in the East then that were um, gay haunts have all been either closed down, pulled down or something. There's one on the corner of Hackney Road and I can't remember the name of the other road. It's, it's in Hackney Road. <coughs> it was called the Arabian. And all these boys used to perform there. And now I think it's a gentleman's strip club. It's, I don't know what it's called, but it's on the corner of Hackney Road. But uh, as I say, all, what, what used to happen, this gay Travers, she was the sort of leader of them all because she was the compare. And um, that Paul Rising, was another one that used to do it. Paul had an affair with, I think it was Guy Burgess, you know, Burgess and McLean. Paul had an affair, Paul's picture's on that cutting I gave you. <coughs> Getting a dry throat. I thought we were gonna do it out there where I could get a drink. Oh, um, this is Paul rising and again, um, she died Oh, about 10 years ago, 80, 83 she was. Um, and uh, she was born in Plasto. And she used to perform in all these pubs with Gay. Mm -hmm. And during the war, it seems, now she, it was only what she told us that she had an affair with Guy Burgess. Presumably it was true. The person that wrote this article was or still is a member, found a member of the Bright Now Story group, who I actually introduced to Paul. And he's a journalist, and he wrote this 
obituary to her. So, um, but he was definitely one of the ones. He used to do um, sort of a, an Eastern dance, sort of like, you know, with lovely long arms and that, where you can see she's very... But then later on, um, somebody called Ron Storm started running drag balls down here. Um, they started off at Tudor Lodge, just near the, um, what is it, the bow flyover. Mm -hmm. And Paula, they, they used to have a fancy dress competition every week, or I think it was every week they did it, and Paula always won it. Because she used to um, spend the whole week getting herself together and, and bake her wigs. Presumably that's what you do to sort of set them and then, then you sort of bake them in the oven, keep them in the oven to get them stiffer. Again, I don't really know the procedure, but um, that's what Paula used to do and nine times out of ten would always win the prize. So, but Tudor Lodge was brilliant because it was full of all these beautiful, glamorous drag queens that used to come from the West End shows and they used to stay out until about three or four in the morning. <coughs> and Ron Storm, he was, um, they used to get quite a few trannies in there, but Ron Storm used to say, I'm not a tranny, dear, I'm a drag queen. And unfortunately, he, oh, they, they left Tudor Lodge and then went to a place, Commercial Road, a pub called the George, at the back of that. I, I think, generally speaking, for my own generation, that older people, older gay people in the East End didn't meet with any opposition because the East End was so cosmopolitan and so theatrical. When you think of people like Flanagan and Allen, for instance, um, Joe Loss, the big uh, musical, what was he, a, a band leader, people like that all came from the East End. Lionel Bart mm -hmm. came from the East End. His mother had a stall down Petticut Lane. The fact that he was a raving queen, it didn't. He was, my boy's on the stage, my boy writes songs, you know. That was all that mattered. They wanted their children to get on and it didn't matter. Even my little mother, she used to say, oh, I don't mind my daughter being, I don't mind my daughter being masculine because she's a career woman. And that was her excuse for me for walking around in a, a man's suit because I was a role-playing dyke, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, what about this book here? Well, this one, again, you might be a bit in copyright with it because it's more recent than, um, when was it? Although the fellow that wrote this is dead. Um, say somewhere. I mean, you can see by the people he's thanking, um, Julie Birchall. Mm -hmm. um, Neil Bartlett. Um, well, there's another one you want to get hold of. Have you heard of Blue Lips? God. Now, they're a modern sort of, um, what are they called? Uh, a theatrical group, but they do, do a lot of mime. They're sort of, um, what do they call it? I mean, new modern lot do all this something arts. What is it? Um, like that, I don't Physical know. Theater. Something like that, yeah. Blue lips. They're, they're quite big. Um, Betty Bourne, who's the leader of them, she's a hackneyed boy. And there's a picture of her in there. They all started with... Oh, there she is. No, there she is, Betty Bourne. 